In this video, we're going to look at some sums and we're going to write them in summation notation. Let's start with a simple example. Say we have x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared. And why not one more plus x5 squared. So we want to write this in a really nice way, in what's called summation notation. So what we do is we write this symbol here. This is the Greek letter. This is called sigma, and it means add up. And then we can pick any variable we want, um, except x. <laughs> so typically people use like i, j, and k. Let's just use i. And notice the numbers here go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you start at 1. So I'm going to put equals 1. And the last number here is 5. So I'm going to put the 5 up here. So we're going from 1 to 5. And then here what we do is we write xi squared, just like that. And this basically means this, right? If you plug in 1, you get x1 squared. The symbol tells you to add, so plus. Then you plug in 2, you get x sub 2 squared. Then you add, then 3, etc. So really, really nice notation. What if we had something like this? Say we have a sub 1 plus b sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus b sub 2 plus dot dot dot. So there's stuff missing here. We don't know what it is. And we're going to pick up at a sub 10 plus b sub 10. This is equal to. So let's try to write this in summation notation. So again, we have to write the Greek letter sigma. It's this one here. And then we get to pick a letter to use. Let's be different. Let's use j this time. And again, we're starting at 1. So I'm going to go ahead and start this at 1. And we're going to finish at 10. And this time we have two things. So we, we have a1, b1, a2, b2. So just write parentheses, aj plus bj. And that would be it. Let's go ahead and do another one. Say we have something like this. f1, x1 squared plus f2, x2 squared, plus dot dot dot, plus f8, x8 squared. So in this case, same thing. We write down our sum. And let's use a different letter this time just for fun. Let's use k. So k starts at 1 again, so we'll start at 1. And we're going to go all the way to 8, because 8's the last number there, 8. And this will be f sub k, x sub k squared, right? So it's, it's two things, right? So it's a little bit different, um, a little bit you know harder to look at, uh, but hopefully that makes some sense. Let's do another one. Sometimes we can have stuff even like this. Say we have f1, x1, y1 plus f2, x2, y2 plus dot 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 plus and let's just say it's fn xn yn so now we're ending at a variable this is very different we haven't done this yet and we have our summation notation here and let's use i this time so i is going to go from one and because we start at one and it finishes at n so in this case we just have fi xi yi so, you know, in all of the examples we've done so far, we always start at 1. What happens if we don't? Let's say we have x3, y3 squared, plus x4, y sub 4 squared. You're supposed to read it y sub 4, uh, but sometimes I get lazy and say y4. It's really x sub 4 and then y sub 4 squared, plus x sub 5 y sub 5 squared plus dot 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 plus x sub capital N y sub capital N squared. Okay, so now it's a little bit harder where we have different variables. So again, we have the sum. Let's start with, let's use i. Except now we're starting at 3, so we have to put a 3 here, okay? And we're going all the way to capital N, so the capital N goes up there. 
and it'll be simply x sub i, y sub i squared, right? And again, we're starting at three and finishing at capital N. So hopefully these examples have helped you uh, understand how to uh, go from, you know, just a sum to, you know, what's called um, summation notation. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.